Hi everybody, it's Jenny coming with an update, short update, quick update on the uh, protocol as well. Uh, jumping back to numbers, all I can say is that my weight is very variable. I must have an incredible amount of water retention weight loss gain from one day to another throughout the course of a day because now I have two scales in two different sections of my bathroom and both of them said I lost 2.8 pounds today. I mean, did I lose 2.8 pounds in one day? No, of course not. So, all right, um, I finished finished HCG about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six days ago. Five, five or six days ago, something like that. Um, and and then I went to my son's college, as I mentioned before, and we didn't eat well, <laughs> including the most popular place by campus, which is um, just a stuffed breadstick place. I mean, come on. So I didn't do well, and I had, in the course of three days, put on almost five pounds on the scale so clearly it wasn't all five pounds of fat so there was water retention in there because I was having carbs um, but the good news is in the last two days four pounds of that I have dropped so I'm happy about that so I'm just one pound away from where I was at the end of round two um, but my goal is to try to lose a little bit of weight in this new P3 and try to stick with eating P3 friendly foods. So um, I guess I kind of did that yesterday. <laughs> We're going to read a little bit about it today. Um, uh, two days ago when I decided I'm really going to stick with this and I've, I'm done eating the extra breadsticks and pizza and stuff that we brought home, desserts from the trip. Um, so after I um, ate through all that and, and looked at the scale and said, okay, get your act together, um, that next day wasn't hungry at all, I realized. I'm starting to become a little bit more in tune to my hunger um, after doing HCG now for two rounds, you know, because uh, you learn on HCG that or I learn, I should say, I think many other people do as well, that I eat because I enjoy eating. Not because I have true hunger, but because it tastes good and I want to. So I'm getting better at staying in tune to that and trying to prevent myself from eating in those situations and waiting until I'm just hungry. So two days ago, I literally only had one all beef hot dog on a keto bun, which I think has two like three net carbs in it or something like that um, and then I had a slice of um, Swiss cheese that I ripped in half and put on the bun so I had some melted Swiss cheese and then some mustard so fair for P3 um, and then yesterday I was at the water park all day um, and we brought some hot dogs with us again keto friendly hot dog bun. I ended up having two all beef hot dogs on the keto buns with just mustard. And then later in the day I had one of the Atkins, I think four net carb uh, coconut keto bars. Um, which I think is P3 friendly because it's low in carbs and sugar but higher in fat but fat's okay on, on round three. So there you go. I think I hear my cats in the other room. So I'm happy with those numbers and I'm going to stick with the course and try to stay away um, from the things I'm not supposed to eat. So I'm briefly going to read to you um, a sentence that talks about um, preparing to go on um, uh, the 
Dr. Simeon's HCG protocol. Now this was written back in the 60s, so I'm not going to read the first paragraph because the first paragraph is really all about how like you have to commit to doing the um, injections, you have to be supervised by the doctor on a daily basis, you have to go into their clinic every day. So this was conducted in Rome, Italy, and that's where he was, and so the original protocol is based off the uh, first round of experiments that he did on this and um, actually he did some before because as he wrote the protocol he's explaining um, why it's important and how people react so there's obviously been smaller clinical trials before this but at any rate he said once you're doing it um, he said to get the injections back in the 60s it was still only provided as an injection and it had to be provided by a doctor and you had to come to the clinic and they monitored you every day and you had to weigh in with them every day and then get consultation from the doctor so it was a whole it was a whole deal so I'm going to skip through that and go to the next paragraph let's read it and then we'll briefly talk about it it says it is also made clear that between courses so like between round one and two between round two and three uh, the patient gets no treatment meaning no HCG and is free to eat anything he pleases except starches and sugar during the first three weeks. All right. So he doesn't explain what to do after those three weeks. <laughs> but we know that at least for the first three weeks, we have to completely stay away from starches and sugars. All right. Which is kind of like eating P2 foods, but you have more calories you can take in and there's more fat that you can eat. Um, I'll, c I'll continue. It says, it is impressed upon him that he will have to follow the prescribed diet, meaning when he starts doing um, HCG again, to the letter of the law, and after the first three days, this will cost him no effort as he will feel no hunger and may indeed have difficulty getting down the 500 calories he will be given. Let me just say I never had difficulty getting the 500 calories down. There, on occasion, or some days I didn't eat the full 500 calories and that was simply because I was distracted enough um, so and I never experienced hunger <laughs> Don't, it's been so long since I've really had hunger um, I just like to eat so it's a matter of if I had a really busy day and I was distracted and doing a bunch of things maybe I didn't eat the 500 calories because it was the end of the day and then I just had my one taco or whatever I never went a day where I didn't eat anything um, Although I've read in a couple different vlogs and blogs that if you don't feel like you need anything that day, you don't have to because the HCG is supposed to be going to your fat reserves and it's supposed to be providing the calories that you need in your bloodstream. Okay. Um, if these conditions are not acceptable, the case is refused. As any compromise or half measure is bound to prove utterly disappointing to the patient and physician alike and is a waste of time and energy. So I get this as a physician. You create a protocol, you do a study, you say this is exactly what you need to do and then you're going to lose weight. And so if people don't do it exactly, then um, it skews the study, it actually makes your results not look as good, you know, I mean you're not following the doctor's orders, right? This is a harder thing to do when you are not going into a clinic every day and getting on the scale and talking with a doctor. I guarantee you 100% I would be eating P2 strictly specific protocol foods and 500 calories or less every single day if I was driving to a clinic and checking in with the physician and talking to him about it and getting on the scale and looking at the results. But this is reality and this is our life and that's not happening. My scale is in my bathroom nobody knows if it's going up or down that's partly why I do these videos because I feel like I keep myself accountable by getting on here daily and saying hey I lost and this is what I ate <laughs> and oh I gained but this is what I ate um, so yeah uh, you know I get that I completely disagree with the it's utterly disapproving and a waste of time or energy because I am never doing the protocol to the letter of the law and I lost 18 pounds on it in my first round and really I lost nine pounds on it on my second round but that's just because I put it nine back on so I'm kind of at the same spot that I was before I'm actually one pound up um, so we'll see 
I'll keep you up to date on is it possible to maintain or even lose a little bit on P3. I was uh, reading some information the other day which I'll share in a future video a little bit more about um, OMAD, um, intermittent fasting, and overall fasting in general which I found very fascinating and, and, and a little uh, motivating for me too. So. I'll share that at another time for you. But that's all I just wanted to share with you today is that I just happened to click on the protocol and scroll down to the next section. And since I'm doing P3, this was P3 specific. I might try to dig deeper and see if I can find a larger section on P3 to share with you tomorrow. But it did specifically say that when you're going into P3, when you've finished a round, um, no starches, no sugars for at least three weeks. So here we go three weeks of no starches and sugars. It's not going to be easy to do. And by no, I think they mean extremely low. <laughs> I don't know that for a fact. But I, I will say, it, I struggle with the notion that he puts an apple in the protocol. If there was no apple to eat every day in the protocol, then I would say, we can't be cheating at all. We can't do net carbs. It doesn't matter we can have zero carbs, zero sugars, zero starches because that's what the protocol says. But he says you can have an apple or two a day and those carbs are so high and the sugar content is so high in that. So so that's my personal struggle with the protocol and why I feel justified and I think rightfully so in saying alright I'm gonna have a few you know a four net carb bar or something like that, but I'm not having the apple. Health-wise, I totally get that the diet bar is nowhere near the nutritional content and value of that of an apple. It's also not a whole food. It's also processed. I mean, there's a lot of bad stuff that is affiliated with it. So is it the smart choice? No. But if you're somebody who, like me, who doesn't really care for apples, <laughs> makes no sense to me put those calories, those sugars, and those starches, and those carbs into my body. Um, but something else like that, or a, a piece of keto bread. Oh, I love bread. I'm waiting for the diet bread, the bread diet to come out. Bread and potatoes. I could just live on bread and potatoes. No potatoes for me. No potatoes. Stay away from starches. Three weeks. Three weeks can be a long time when you're not on HCG having those parameters. But I'll be in touch. Let me know how you're doing. And um, I'm going to try to catch up on emails today. And so I should be able to get in touch with everybody who's commented. Thank you for your comments. Please like and subscribe. Um, like this video. Subscribe. And um, that just means a few more people will be able to see it on the platform and if a few more people see it and they like and subscribe then I know that might make me continue to keep doing these at the point where I'm like ready to throw in the towel and not do any more videos um, or at least let me know that there's at least something in the content that you're still finding valuable all right that's all you take care sorry for the ice cream I just realized I just clicked on my video and see that I have my ice cream right here this was my reward for my last kid I kept adding a scoop of ice cream to the top every time you did a good job. All right, um, so not P2 or P3 friendly. <laughs> Do not eat this. It has a lot of sugar for loading, but it also has a lot of fat, so I would say it's okay for loading, but that's it. All right, I'll see you all maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Bye.